The focus of this video is to watch how the question storming method is used to help, speaking from experience, Advanced Toastmasters Club face their membership growth and challenge. Brainstorming has been around for over 60 years. One key objective is to find one or more solutions to a problem. It is a problem solving tool used to identify all ideas concerning a problem. The number one principle is not to criticize and to consider all ideas good ideas. The goal is to free associate and not be concerned with the merit or practicality of an idea. So what's the issue with brainstorming method? Recent studies show people will share less ideas, not more, in a group. The entire process gets stuck and often hits a wall. Brainstorming may not be as effective as you think. The authors of these books have explored how the most innovative business people develop and create the best ideas. People like Steve Jobs of Apple, Jeff Bezos of Amazon.com, and Mark Benioff of Salesforce.com, and hundreds of other entrepreneurs and innovators. They discovered one major activity shared by all of these individuals, the need to be curious. They would question everything, and in so doing, they would create new questions to lead them to generate the information they never had before. The search begins for a better question. Question storming follows a simple sequence of steps or phases. The first is to generate a list of questions. The second, you give the list some consideration and assess the priorities. Third, you eventually pick two or three and go deep. In the fourth phase, you begin your research to find different answers that might apply to your questions. This begins to provide you with new ideas and insights you never had before. The final phase is to implement an activity or experiment to test what the outcomes are from an individual idea. The phase one of brainstorming, you gather your group or club members around a flip chart, whiteboard, or a computer screen. Record every question that comes to mind. The goal is to free associate and not to enter into discussions. Aim for as many questions as possible, over 50 if you can. So let's explore this process with an actual example that I facilitated with members of the Speaking From Experience Club. I asked them to come up with questions related to increasing membership and attracting new members to the club. Here are the questions the club recorded. Join the club. How many more members do we need? Where do we look for these members? What will they do for us? Well, will a new member be voted in? What are the acceptance criteria of the new members? What value do we offer to the new member? What makes us different? Will the uh, candidates be a right fit for us? What events do we need to host? When do we need these members by? Are these members required for certain standards of club? Do we charge these new members? What age can we accept them at? Can we change our club to a supper club? Within 10 minutes, we had gathered over 28 questions. Now we proceed to phase two. The group starts to choose the most important questions, looking for patterns and possible groupings. The goal here is to pick questions or come up with new ones not thought up of before. Each individual claims their favorite. The group begins to realize there are common choices and we begin to see a pattern. The pattern appears to center around different themes. Who would make an ideal candidate and what value do we offer? Someone then asks a new question. Why are club points important? Another chimes in with the question on whether you join the club in order for the club to even get points. This question has the force to move the interest of the group to another area. Eventually, as the ideas and feelings begin to surface, someone proposes another new question. Why did we join? The entire room erupts and avid support by a majority favor this new question. This inspires another member to ask a question related to the previous theme. Who in the world would care about the values our club has to offer? The no conversation now turns to questions of why. And one enthusiastic member suggests a new question. Why do we want or need more members? 
Now this question appears to comprise the sentiments behind four or five different other questions. Because the question is vague, it generates little support and is dropped. But this seemingly hollow question gives time and space for a new insight in another member's mind. Why don't we explore the question of membership from different perspectives? These include the perspective of a new member, our own personal perspective, and from the perspective of a thriving club. In fact, all the previous questions can be grouped into one of these three perspectives. Now, we can enter the final phase of the assessing phase and narrow the questions to the three most important. It helps in this case to group the top remaining questions into these categories relating to questions of who, what, why, and how. And finally, the group unites and selects the final three they deem of value to explore further. It happens that the answers to these three questions will also have relevance to many of the other questions and will impact the ultimate solution. At this point, the first part of the question storming method is over. It is suggested that the group leave the room to begin to let the questions they are willing to investigate sink in. At the next meeting, each member will be asked to contribute any new thinking that the answers they develop open up. For the purpose of this video, I will share with you my observations and thinking related to these questions. Here I list a number of reasons that I think members who join, speaking from experience, when you consider the personal reasons carefully, you find that the values we offer are not directly related to reasons people join. Values we offer requires a commitment from members a commitment to volunteer time and effort to mentor a new member who's commencing their journey with an advanced club. Prospective members who have a high interest in communication and a desire to get to another higher level will find this advanced club interesting. And I also figure that if someone is frustrated with their current situation or their club or their path that they're on, they may also consider our club as an alternative. In summary, we join because we are passionate communicators, we appreciate excellence and the high caliber evaluations that are provided in our club. Our club offers potential members knowledge, skills and mentoring attitude that is unique or different and not available anywhere else in our community. So who do I think these reasons and values would appeal to? In specific, they would attract corporate business leaders, managers, or supervisors of employees, those who have to speak in public or motivate, possibly trainers as well as workshop facilitators. We have enough ideas and can turn to possible actions to take. For example, the group may decide that an increase in awareness of the club identity can inspire improved messaging and what personal needs individuals in the community may have. This awareness would serve to identify specific prospects in our social and professional circles. Now we can begin to build an inspired roadmap. An agenda of what we can do next becomes clear. Asking focused questions creates the relevant answers. The answers are found through observing, networking, and experimenting. We observe ideas and associations in the world. We network with other groups, clubs, and even with other people who hold entirely different sets of interests. And we can gain valuable feedback when we take risks in trying new events. The best questions will bring the right answers. Question storming unites the entire group and contributes to building a consensual outcome. A better vision is created, one with energy and enthusiasm. Attracting new members and selling the club will have a higher likelihood of succeeding.